Charlie Taylor, who is the Chief Inspector of Prisons. And my first question to him was how on earth this was allowed to happen? Well, it's enormously concerning. And, and I think one of the reasons maybe, and again, we don't know the details of this case yet, but one of the reasons may be to do with staffing levels at Wandsworth. Mm -hmm. And certainly we know this has been a huge concern in our recent inspections of that jail and actually a number of other jails around the country. And if you haven't got enough staff to be able to get the basics right, there is always a danger that people will drop the ball and make a mistake. And when it comes to things like security, it tends to be just about having really good routines. So I do X, you do Y, we make sure these checks are done. But of course, if there aren't enough staff in place, and that's something we flag up a lot, then things can just begin to go a bit wrong. It's interesting you're mentioning um, concerns you've previously flagged, because mm. I, I just want to read a bit of your report into Wandsworth. Mm. It was done in 2021, published last year, and this is what you wrote. Leaders in this crumbling, overcrowded, vermin-infested prison will need considerable ongoing support from the prison service, notably with the recruitment and retention of staff, as you point out, and also improving the infrastructure of the jail. I mean, that is damning. It is, and Wandsworth is, was built 170 years ago. It's a very old jail, one of the oldest in the country. It is in a, in a real state. Uh, it wasn't built to hold nearly as many men uh, who are locked up there as they are now. So large proportion of prisoners are locked in, in, in cells that were originally designed for one person. They're locked in with someone else. It's a sort of 12 by six cell, roughly 12 foot by six. There's an unscreened toilet in the corner of the room. Uh, their food is served to them in the room as well. Uh, and often they're spending up to 22 hours a day locked up in that very tight environment. Um, on top of that, we're seeing things like drugs finding their way into prisons in, 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 in large numbers. And what that creates is an illicit economy that then often is the cause of things like violence, people to get into debt and those sorts of issues. And that's happening in Wandsworth, you think? And, and that's an ongoing issue in every prison. Some are worse than others, but Wandsworth certainly is a jail that's always been difficult to keep drugs out of. So there's drugs and mobile phones in every prison, is what you're Indeed, saying. indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you talk about the staffing levels and the concern about staffing levels, what does that mean? What impact does that have on places like Wandsworth? Well, when we inspected Wandsworth, there were, I think, 30% of staff were, were, were unavailable for full, for full duties. So whether they were off sick or whether they were on restricted duties. But that reduced the complement of staff who were available enormously. And what that means is that prisoners don't get unlocked on time. It means that uh, prisoners aren't escorted to where they need to go, so they don't get escorted to things like education. Um, but it also means that some of the basics just don't get done. So making sure people have got soap, making sure that people have got duvet cover, those sorts of things that they need. It's extraordinary. Like, yeah. it, it is a huge concern. And, and, and um, inevitably, when that happens, you, you, you get difficulties. And, and, and you lose control, I guess, of the prison. And there's a danger of losing control. I mean, generally, prisons are very cautious about letting people out of their cells. And that's what we've been seeing at Wandsworth because they haven't got enough staff to escort people out. People are just locked up in their cells for long periods of time. But the issue, Sophie, is that these people are coming out one day. Mm -hmm. And the idea that you're rehabilitating people by banging, up, banging them up behind the door for 22 hours a day is just simply fanciful. I think a lot of people will be wondering, why was this individual, a suspected terrorist, mm. in a Category B prison? I mean, no one's ever escaped from Belmarsh. Should we put it there? Well, again, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. The Secretary of State has, has asked for an inquiry, particularly on, into why that decision was made. And so I wouldn't be able to be sure about, about why that was. Certainly, we know that some lower-level terrorist uh, suspects could be held in, in Category B prisons. They wouldn't always necessarily go to Belmarsh. But in the case of that individual, I don't know. Mm. Is there a link between, as, as some would say, you know, this escape and a lack of funding in prisons? Well, it's hard to make that link very directly, but, but if prisons haven't got enough staff, if you've got prisoners who, who are being locked up for long periods of time, they're not getting to education, they're not getting to work and those sorts of things, there is a danger that, that these sorts of things happen. So can we, can, we, can we say this is directly to do with funding? Well, that's probably difficult, mm -hmm. but actually if there aren't enough staff, sometimes that is very much a funding issue. Um, more widely on funding, and I'm quite interested mm. to get your take on this, yeah. because, like, to be honest, you know, I interview politicians, Labour politicians will say, look, there is a problem with funding, the Tory austerity years cut budgets. Mm. If you speak to the Conservatives, they'll say, well, actually, funding's risen dramatically in, in the last few years, so that's not a concern. What is the truth? Well, when you find a prison like Wandsworth, it, it, it really needs closing, ultimately. It, it's not a suitable prison to you be should shut down, you housing should, people you'd, in. You'd the... shut down Wandsworth, that's Well, right. it, in an ideal world, one would. But, of course, uh, you need jails because you need to service the courts. 
we've actually got a, a crisis at the moment in prisons just in terms of population places. So there are only just enough prisons, uh, places available at the moment for the number of prisoners who are coming in. And of course, that puts a huge strain on the system. So in a jail like Wandsworth, you're getting people in, you're getting them to court, you're getting them back from court. And then as soon as they've been sentenced, they're being moved on to another jail as quickly as possible. And it's something about that churn that also adds to the general complications and sometimes what feels like chaos in, in some of those um, big local prisons like Wandsworth. What, what's your take on funding specifically? Well, it, it's interesting on funding because we inspected a, a, a children's prison called Cook and Wood uh, earlier on this year. And we were enormously concerned by very high levels of violence. The fact that I think 20, 22, 23 of the boys in the jail were being kept in, in effect, what was solitary confinement. I mean, absolutely shocking. And there are only 77 boys in the jail. There are 350 staff in there. So, so, so What kind of violence were you seeing? Well, lots of weapon making. So, so what had happened is that the boys themselves were feeling unsafe. Staff were backing off and, and failing to do some of the things they ought to have been doing. For example, making sure that cer the searches were conducted. And what that meant was, was that uh, they were creating weapons and those weapons were being used. And I'll just give you one example. There was a, a, a boy we came across who'd, who'd cut the uh, plug off his kettle. Now, the reason for doing that is you put the plug into a sock and it can then be used as a weapon. Mm -hmm. But in that particular jail, instead of conducting what you would normally do, which would be a full search, find that plug, make sure that uh, it was dealt with, that actually all they did was just gave him another kettle. So he had a serviceable kettle and he had a serviceable weapon at the same time. So they didn't take the weapon away? So, so, so they, didn't, they didn't find the weapon find until it. much later on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was happening a lot. So makeshift weapons being made. But that was in a jail which had 23 senior leaders in the prison that had only 77 boys being locked up. Mm -hmm. But elsewhere we go to, like prisons like Wandsworth, we also inspected Bristol recently. And again, that was a prison where they were really struggling with prisoners who were um, hugely high levels of drug taking, hugely high levels of need, mental health difficulties, homelessness, that sort of cycle of offending that people get caught into. And again, Bristol was an enormously, um, uh, an enormously violent place and, and very risky. And again, it was rife with drugs. Interesting. Um, is, do you think there's an issue with politicians not prioritising prisons? It's never going to be a vote winner. Oh, we're going to spend yeah. lots of money on you know, locking people up. We've had a huge churn in uh, justice secretaries as well. Is that a problem? Well, I think ch political churn, I think, is always something that, that, that feeds into some of the challenges here. I think it's difficult because if you ask people would they like more money spent on the NHS or on schools or on roads or money to be spent on prisons, I think it's fairly obvious what the answer would be. People don't like prison as much and they're frightened of crime. However, if we do want people to come out from prisons, and prisons have got a critical duty here in terms of public protection, if we want people to come out from prison and to stop offending, then we need to do more for them while they're locked up. And that means giving them the skills they need, it means putting them on the right sort of programmes, it means getting them into the good habits of work. So when they come out, they don't create more victims, they, they, they don't uh, cause trouble in their communities, and they take their place back into society as hard-working, tax-paying uh, people. But at the moment, what we're seeing is, is just that churn, that revolving door of pe people in and out of prison, often for many, many years.